What's up guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a comparison video with the 2019 MacBook Pro and the 2021 MacBook Pro. These two machines are gonna be going head to head with my workflow, the workflow that I do every day. So with that, let's get into the video. So the reason why laptops are so important to me, even though I have a Mac Studio at my house here in the office, is because I do travel a lot. I travel about six months out of the year. When I'm on the road, I need something that's gonna perform. I did use the 2019 MacBook Pro. It did the job, but every time I was gone, it, it was a massive hit. When I'm home, the Mac Studio performs very well. It's, it's awesome, I have no complaints. It's just performing great. You know, cut away, do my job. When I'm on the road, I still was able to work, but it's, it was just a massive performance hit. So I went out and purchased the 2021 MacBook Pro. I spec'd it exactly the same as the Mac Studio, and I already made a video on the 2021 MacBook Pro and the Mac Studio. It was actually the last video I made. I compared the two to see how big of a hit that I'm taking, even though it's spec'd exactly the same. I think the results will surprise you. After this video, you should check it out. So in this video, I wanna see the 2021 MacBook Pro perform against the 2019 MacBook Pro since this is the one I'm using on the road now. I wanna see how much time I'm saving. So with saying all that, let's go over the specs of the 2019 MacBook Pro. Also the other new laptop, we go over the specs of that too. Starting out, the 2019 has a ninth generation Intel Core i7 six core processor with turbo boost up to 4.5 gigahertz but as you're going to see in these tests it thermal throttled really bad so the turbo boost for video editing does nothing this computer also has 16 gigabytes of ram it's dd4 onboard memory the storage is 500 gigabytes the graphics card is an amd radium pro 5300 m with four gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. The display is obviously 16 inches, you know that. Let's go over the 2021 MacBook Pro and go over those specs. It's a M1 Max with 32 gigabytes of RAM. It does have the upgraded graphics, 32 core. It has the same exact specs as the Studio. I did that on purpose because when I'm on the road, I don't wanna take a massive hit like I was taking before. So a few disclaimers before we get into it. All the footage that was used and these tests were shot with the Canon C70, 4K at 60 frames a second, long gob, very challenging footage. Also, the project's settings were exactly the same. It was actually the exact same project on an SSD. All right, so let's see how long the 2019 MacBook Pro takes to proxy all this footage. So as you've seen, it took one hour, 32 minutes, and 37 seconds to proxy all this footage. Again, this was a little YouTube video, not a full TV show. That's a long time for that amount of footage. With that, we don't know how long it's gonna take the M1 Max MacBook Pro to do it yet, but that's the time for the proxies. Let's get into the render. Let's see how long it takes to render this edited timeline. Let's see how long that takes. Okay, so to render this seven minute and 28 second timeline, it took 30 minutes, 41 seconds. It, the timeline is 4K and it's 30 frames a second. So it, it is a 4K timeline, so we can keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and get into the export and see how long that takes. So exporting a 4K 30 timeline, it took 53 minutes exactly. That's a long time, but we do have to remember it's a 4K timeline and it's shot on this long gob footage, which is very tough footage. It's terrible footage to work with, just to be honest with you. Anyways, besides the point, let's go ahead and get into the M1 Max times. Let's go ahead and get into the proxies. Let's see how long it takes. Hopefully we shave some time off and hopefully I didn't waste my money. Let's go ahead and see. Okay, so exporting all these proxies, it took 25 minutes and 18 seconds. That's a big relief. Big time saved. Thank you, Lord. All right, so with that out the way, let's go ahead and do the render, see how long it takes to render this timeline. Again, same exact timeline. Let's see how long it takes. So 
so rendering out this timeline took 25 minutes and 47 seconds. Honestly, not the result I was hoping for. It's only a five minute shave off from the 2019 MacBook Pro. I do have a theory on why it didn't shave off more time, even though it's spec better than the 2019, but I'm gonna talk about that a little later. Let's go ahead and get into the export times and then I talk about why I think that time is not what I was hoping for. So the export took 34 minutes and 22 seconds. That's a 20 minute shave off from the i7 MacBook Pro. So I'm happy with that. I think it's a great time, but you're, you're probably thinking to yourself, 34 minutes and 22 seconds for a seven minute, 28 second timeline. But we gotta remember it's 4K 30 long gob. I'm gonna stress that again. Tough footage and it's 4K 30, breaking it down from 4K 60. So it did save me time. Most of the TV shows that I edit are 1080p, 30 frames a second. So it can chew right through that, no problem. I've already edited a TV show on this computer and it's chewed right through it, it was amazing. So the reason why the render didn't have a bigger gap, only had a five minute gap, I think the reason why it wasn't a bigger gap like the export was is because I think it thermal throttled doing that. The M1 Max MacBook Pro can thermal throttle and as you've seen in these tests, it does thermal throttle. If you watch my Mac Studio versus my MacBook Pro, again, they're specced exactly the same. The Mac Studio blew it out the water. You should watch that video. And it's because it thermal throttles just like any laptop. So that's why I think the gap wasn't bigger, but either way, it's still a huge improvement from the 2019 MacBook Pro. I should have been calling it i7 MacBook Pro this whole time. It's too late for that. I'm not reshooting all this. Anyways, it's definitely a huge improvement. The proxies went from hour 32 all the way down to 25 minutes. That is huge. That's like a whole hour saved. That's the kind of performance I wanted. Amazing. Definitely money well spent, definitely happy with the product. So that's all this video is. I wanted to make sure I did not waste my money with the M1 Max. Whenever I did the test with the Mac Studio, I got nervous, so I had to do this test. All right, so with that, that's all there is in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell notification, and I'll see you in the next video.